Hi, this is Wild Child with United Anarchy, and I'm here today uh, because my guildies have asked me, since I have to set up Week Warriors again after building a new computer, if I could walk them through the process of creating a Week Aura debuff tracker or buff tracker and uh, show them how to import strings as well. So, thank you for watching today, and I hope this answers your questions. To start out, I've downloaded Week Auras 2 through Curse Client and have it currently loaded on WoW. I'm going to open up Week Auras by typing in slash WA, which will open up this box. Because I don't have any current Week Auras, it shows over on the left that nothing is loaded. Um, there's nothing not loaded. And I currently have New selected. I have several options over on the right hand side to be able to track different buffs or debuffs. If I already know a weak aura that I want to bring in, I can always import it using a string, and we'll talk about how to do that in just a bit. To start off, I'm going to show you how to track a buff on yourself. Uh, so one of the most important buffs that I track is my Harmony. My Harmony is my mastery proc, and it needs to have 100% uptime while I'm healing. So I always want to make sure that I have some type of visual indicator that I have my harmony up. But not only that, I want something that shows me it's missing so that I can proc it again as quickly as possible. So in order to track this buff, I'm going to create a progress texture. You could also use a icon that shows a countdown. Or you could use a progress bar. Any of these would be a good option when you're wanting to track something that has a countdown. For the progress texture, I'm going to select that and it's going to show a new one here. I'm going to name this one Harmony. Once you've named it, you can hit enter and now you have to fill out the different tabs. And let's talk about the tabs for just a second. So you have your display tab, that's going to change the look and feel of whatever you're tracking. You have your trigger, this is what causes this to show up on your screen. So right now it's a big bright sun, I'm going to change that. But what's going to trigger it to pop up and load on the screen? The load piece is which tunes are actually going to show this. So I don't want it to show all the time, I don't want it to show on every tune. And I don't want it to show it on my druid if I'm not healing. So we're going to be able to change that. Actions is what happens when it shows up, what happens when it hides. And on the animations, we can call, call special attention to the weak aura, either by making it bounce up and down, slide in and out. Uh, so we'll kind of play around with those settings and see what we can do there. Under display, I'm going to choose what do I really want this to look like. It's going to be on my screen most of the time, and I want it to stand out, but I don't want it to take away from the fight or cause too much of a distraction. A big yellow sun in the middle of my screen may cause a bit of a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a different look. When you select choose, it gives you several different options here. Uh, in the drop down, you have several different categories you can choose from. Uh, I really like the heads up category. Uh, it gives you really nifty bars uh, that surround your tune and uh, that allows me to track without it taking away from the environment. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this uh, ruined one and uh, as you can see I can kind of move it around, take a look um, at what it's going to look like on my screen. I can zoom out zoom in, make sure that it's not too distracting. Um, once you've chosen what it is you want it to look like, you can hit OK. Now I don't like the white and black color, so I'm going to change this. And under the foreground, uh, blue is my favorite color, so we're going to go with the blue look here. So now it's going to be more of a blue color. And as it fades, it's still turning that background color 
Uh, so I'm going to change that to be a little different as well, maybe like a darkish blue as it fades out. So it's really up to you what you change here. Uh, there are no wrong answers. Just play around with it until you get the look and feel you're, you're looking for. Under Trigger, we're going to choose what's going to cause this blue line to show up. Now in this case, I'm tracking Harmony, which is an aura or a buff that's going to be on me. There's several things that you can choose as a trigger here. Underneath Aura, you have Custom, Event, Status, or Aura. An Aura is a buff or a debuff. So normally when I come in here, I'm choosing Aura because I'm tracking a buff or a debuff, either on myself or on my target. So we're going to leave Aura alone. And you can come back here later and play with all the different options uh, that you can track there. I need to know what the name of the spell is that I'm tracking. So in this case, I'm tracking Harmony. So I'm going to type that in and hit OK. And it comes up with four different matches. So these are four different spell IDs that it's going to track. If any of these show up, then it should pop the blue bars around my tune. I also need to specify who am I looking at. So is this the player? Is this the target? Um, if you are tracking some type of debuff you're placing on your target, then you would want to put the name of the spell here and then change this portion to the target instead of the player. In my case, I'm going to choose player because I am tracking a buff on myself. Under Aura Type, designate whether it's a debuff or a buff. And then the other thing that you really want to look at is whether or not you're tracking your own casts and only your own casts. This is very important if you're applying a debuff to a target that other people may be targeting. If you have a stackable debuff that you're tracking, you don't want it to track somebody else's debuff instead. Underneath load, I want to make sure that these blue bars are only loading or showing up when I care about them. For example, I'm usually only going to show this in combat. Right now, because I want to show you what it looks like later, I'm going to leave this unchecked. But this is usually a good thing to have, is to make sure that these are only showing up when you're in combat. You also have the ability to make it specific to one tune. Or, if you have multiple tunes of the same class, then you can specialize it to class. For instance, I only want this to show up if I'm playing a druid. But not just any druid, I want to make sure that I'm playing a resto druid. So I'm also going to select talent specialization and choose restoration. That way, when I flip over to my guardian spec later, it's not going to show up on my guardian druid. If you're tracking a buff that is specific to a talent and you tend to switch talents in between bosses, it's always really good to make sure that you are selecting talent here and then only showing it when specific talents are chosen. You have the ability to choose player level uh, so that it only shows up if you're 90 or above and you can also specify which zone you want it to show up in if it is that specific. If we select actions, we can make it do different things whenever it loads on the screen or when it goes away. For example, if this one goes away, I want to call attention to it because it needs to be refreshed or I need to hit a button to make it come back. So on hide, I could have it message me, I could have it play a sound, I could make a button glow, um, but in this case I'm going to have it play a sound to alert me that I need to refresh it. Under the sound options you have several different things it could be. Uh, it could be a short one, or it could be really loud and annoying. Uh, it's really up to you and make sure you're choosing a sound channel that's turned up really well and that you can hear really well. 
Under animation, you can have it do something um, interesting at the start. You could have it do something uh, while it's just sitting there, or you could have it do something strange when it finishes. Uh, in this case, I want to call attention to it when it finishes. So we're going to go into the preset, and you can have it slide out through the bottom. So now we have our Harmony Tracker. We're going to take a moment and uh, try it out, see how it works. So to be able to uh, pop my Harmony, I'm going to click on Swiftman. And now my Harmony is activated. You can see it up here in the right hand corner. As it's going away, the bars are going down. and it slid out the bottom and it made the sound. So that's how you create a buff tracker and you can do the exact same thing if you're trying to track a debuff on a target. You would just want to switch it to a target versus a player. Just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like if you're going to track a debuff. We're going to use Fairy Fire as an example, or in this case Fairy Swarm. And let's say that I wanted to keep Fairy Swarm up on a target while um, we're in raid. I'm going to track that and try and keep it at 100%. So again, I'm going to go into Weak Auras by hitting Enter. and typing in slash WA. In this case, I'm going to make an icon that shows that I've that I have applied a uh, fairy swarm and it will show a countdown of how much time is left before I need to refresh it. So I'm going to go ahead and name this one fairy swarm. And since this is an icon, it's going to be dependent upon what spell we choose, right? So um, I'm just going to put it someplace where I know I can see it. Uh, let's say we'll make it right here. And uh, I can make it larger if I want to or smaller. You can kind of play around with it. Uh, I do want it to show the cooldown. So on the display, I'm going to select cooldown. And then that way it's going to give me a countdown in the middle of how much time it has left. Under the trigger, again, this is an aura because it's a debuff. And the name of it is Fairy Swarm. Again, it shows me there's four matches. And it gives me now the, the icon so I can see what it looks like. And uh, we are tracking this on my target, not on myself. This is not a buff, it is a debuff. And we want to make sure that we're tracking my own only. Under load, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing this in combat only. I'm also going to specify this to my class and my specialization usually. So, again, this is only for druids. I'm only going to load this when I'm in a specific class, and let's say it's for Restro. And then I can have it do actions if I want. In this case, I'm not going to have it do any additional actions. I just want the button to show up with the countdown. So let's go ahead and test this one out and make sure it works. So I have a nice nifty load here. And we're going to select Fairy Swarm. As you can see, it now has five minutes on it. And I don't have to reapply it until the time runs out. Poor little goat over here is attacking me in the meantime. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our goat. 
and let's take a look at how do you import a string of weak auras. So a lot of weak auras that I found, I found through googling Resto Druid weak aura or Frost Mage weak aura or whatever I'm looking for and weak auras. There's a lot of people out there who've created weak auras that do some pretty interesting things and some of them work together in groups. So um, finding somebody else's weak auras and being able to import their strings makes it really easy for you to apply a lot of these visualizations without much work on your part. In this case, I took all of my strings from my old computer and uh, brought them over to this one. So we're going to go ahead and apply them. To bring in a string, I'm going to go ahead and open up Weak Auras again by slash WA in my chat. And now over on the right hand side, I'm going to choose the option to import a string. This is going to open a great big black box that I can paste my string into. So I have copied my string from my old um, weak auras and I'm just going to paste them in here. It looks kind of funny. Sometimes it does throw a Lua era um, and you can just kind of close out of that. You usually don't have to worry about it. It is also going to open a box. Sometimes it's down here, sometimes it's here. Um, look around, there's a box somewhere with information on what it is that you're importing. Go ahead and select Import. And now you have all of the weak auras that you attach to the string. So in this case, for my Resto Druid, you can see it has a lot of different weak auras. So there's my Harmony. Uh, Nature's Vigil is what I'm watching there. My two-piece, um, this is if I don't have Harmony up. So it's all grouped together and if I hit my plus sign over here as a group you can see all those different weak auras. So that's a quick, quick way to get um, weak auras onto your, your tune, especially if you like somebody else's setup. So that's everything that I have for you today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you know where to get a hold of me. Uh, if you don't know where to get a hold of me, that is unitedanarchy.engine.com. Thank you.